Hi, it's Katrina. From an ancient abandoned palace to what happened to the lost colony of Virginia, here are eight historical and archaeological mysteries that have finally been solved. Number 8. Abandoned Palace In 2009, archaeologists discovered the ruins of a Canaanite palace at the Tel Kabri site in Israel. Larger than a modern-day shopping mall, it's one of the largest Middle Bronze Age palaces ever discovered in the country, and likely once served as a political center. Excavations began in 1957, and numerous artifacts have been uncovered, including the only Minoan-style frescoes ever found in Israel, as well as over 100 jars that once held spiced wine, constituting the oldest and largest known wine cellar from the ancient Near East. The palace was abandoned during the 18th century BC, shortly after being renovated, and until recently, researchers were baffled about what could have caused the sudden desertion. A study published in September claims to have finally solved the riddle. A team of American and Israeli scientists examined the palace's site for signs of a natural disaster that may have prompted people to flee, and they also searched for evidence of war and violence. After several years of digging, they are confident that they know why the Canaanites abruptly left the palace behind 3,700 years ago. The team noticed that the structures contained several bizarre features, including unusually sloped, wavy-looking floors, offset walls, and signs of heavy objects having fallen onto the floors. Additionally, the palace floor was covered in sediment, which the researchers analyzed only to find that it contained fine grains of plaster and other building materials. They also took a look at Dead Sea sediment records, which show that a tremor happened in the region around 1700 BC, when the palace was abandoned. All things considered, it appears as though an earthquake triggered the Canaanites to desert the palace. Number 7. Easter Island Statues There are numerous mysteries surrounding the statues of giant heads on Easter Island. These heads are known as Moai by the Rapa Nui people, who carved the figures from stone around 1,100 to 1,500. But did you know that these enormous statues actually have a hidden body underground? A team of archaeologists from UCLA developed the Easter Island Statue Project to study and preserve the artifacts. In total, they studied almost 1,000 statues over nine years. Over time, the statues were buried to their heads, so it was their job to dig some out to see what the rest of them looked like. While excavating the statues, the team found petroglyphs on the back. But one of the biggest questions about the statues is why the Rapi Nui choose to put the statues where they are. Many of the figures sit on stone platforms called ahu, which experts analyzed as part of the study while considering the locations of the island's natural resources. Researchers have long believed that the monuments have ritual significance, but they were unsure of why or how, especially since the moai are carved from enormous blocks of stone that were carried long distances. The location of the stone quarries don't make any sense, but they are near other resources, most importantly, near fresh water. The findings came after Professor Carl Lipo from Binghamton University in New York and his colleagues became interested in where the Rapa Nui people got their drinking water, given the island's absence of natural streams. They noticed that freshwater streams appear along the coast during low tide, and that fresh water is also found inland in some places where the statues are located. Additionally, there is evidence of ancient wells near the sites. Archaeologists have also found burial sites of several people found right near the statues, indicating that each one represents a family unit, and that the Rapa Nui buried their dead with the family statue next to sacred freshwater sources. The mysteries of the Easter Island statues are finally being revealed. Number 6. Henry VIII's Jousting Accident King Henry VIII, the notorious Tudor monarch who is best known for his tyrannical ways and many wives, endured a devastating accident in 1536 that some experts believe may have triggered his infamous fury. On January 24th of that year, at age 44, he fell from his horse while jousting and became trapped beneath the animal. He spent up to two hours unconscious, according to some versions of the story, and sustained traumatic, lifelong injuries thereafter. Over the following 10 years, Henry's once likable and charming demeanor became insufferable and short-fused. 
The unfortunate incident happened at Greenwich Palace, the king's favorite residence, but the home was eventually destroyed, leaving the exact location of the jousting court where Henry fell off his horse a mystery. Until now, that is. In early November, researchers announced the discovery of where they believe Henry VIII's accident occurred. Shortly before the COVID-19 pandemic stopped life in its tracks, a team led by architectural expert Simone Withers from the University of Greenwich scanned the property using ground-penetrating radar. They found the remnants of two octagonal structures that were likely used as viewing platforms from which people watched jousting matches. What's left of the towers is buried five and a half feet underground. Based on their location, the researchers believe that the jousting court, also called the Tilt Yard, was located roughly 330 feet east of where they originally thought it was. The court measured about 650 feet by 250 feet. This fascinating find marks just one of many exciting discoveries experts have made in recent years, thanks to advanced technology that enables them to see underground without digging. Number 5. A lost city rediscovered. About a decade ago, archaeologists began searching off the Tunisian coast for the lost ancient Roman city of Neapolis after theorizing that a massive earthquake triggered a tsunami, which wiped the metropolis out roughly 1,650 years ago. Around the same time, the Roman historian and soldier Amian Marcelin wrote about the Gargantuan Wave, which allegedly killed thousands of people and plunged entire coastal cities into the Mediterranean Sea. A team of Italian and Tunisian researchers finally located the submerged ruins of Neapolis in 2017, near the modern-day city of Nebul. The remains were surprisingly well-preserved, revealing ancient roads, monuments, and dozens of jars of garum, a condiment made from fermented fish. Neapolis unfortunately serves as an omen for today's coastal cities in the region. According to a 2008 study, earthquakes as strong as the one that sank Neapolis are likely to occur once every 800 years or so, meaning it's entirely likely that the submerged metropolis will someday be joined by new neighboring ruins. Number 4. Stones from Stonehenge Stonehenge is one of the world's most famous archaeological landmarks, but it's also ironically shrouded in mystery. Some of the lingering questions revolving around the prehistoric megaliths may never be answered, but scientists are actively working to solve what they can. Earlier this year, archaeologists and geologists announced that they had determined where the largest rocks that make up Stonehenge were sourced from, solving one of the site's longest standing quandaries. The Neolithic monuments are made from a type of rock called sarsen, which experts knew was transported to the site from elsewhere around 2500 BC. Until recently, scholars believe that the materials were sourced from a 75-square-mile range of hills called Marlboro Downs, located between 15 and 25 miles north of Stonehenge. They recently narrowed this location down to the West Woods, a two-square-mile area in Wiltshire, just south of the village of Lockridge. Archaeologist Katie Whitaker, who examined the West Woods in detail, believes that Stonehenge's builders chose to source rock from there for its size and flatness. In fact, prehistoric people sourced rock from the site to build a tomb 1,200 years before Stonehenge was constructed. Now that archaeologists know where the rock for Stonehenge came from, their next task is to figure out exactly how the massive boulders were transported and what precise route the movers used to get them from point A to point B. Number 3. Two Million Year Old Stone Balls Two million years ago, long before modern humans evolved into existence, our ancestors carved out small stone balls from rock. But scientists were mystified about what they may have used this hand-sized objects for until earlier this year, when a new study suggested that the balls were like ancient can openers. Simply put, early hominids used them to get to the marrow inside animal bones. These stone balls have been found at numerous archaeological sites in Africa, Europe, and Asia, and are some of the world's oldest known human-made artifacts. Scientists finally got to the bottom of the mystery surrounding their use after a team led by archaeologist Ella Asaf discovered a cache of 30 stone balls in Kesem Cave in Israel. 
The objects were crafted and used at some point while humans inhabited the cave between 400,000 and 200,000 years ago. While nearly all the stone tools in Qasem Cave were made from flint, 29 of the balls were carved from either dolomite or limestone. Asaf explained to Life Science that the balls represent a very old technology compared to the other artifacts in the cave. In a study published in July, another team microscopically examined the stone balls and found residue and marks that indicated that they were used as tools for breaking animal bones and extracting marrow. To be sure of their findings, the team broke bones using naturally occurring cobblestones, then repeated the task using deliberately shaped stone balls. They quickly determined that the purposely made balls were much better at breaking bones open than the natural stone balls were. Moreover, the man-made tools bore the same types of wear marks as the stone balls found at Qasem Cave. By being able to access bone marrow, early humans likely greatly increased their nutritional and caloric intake. In other words, they were well fed, thanks to these seemingly simple stone balls, which were truly an innovative invention of the time. Number 2. Wilson's Arch The age of Jerusalem's monuments and the identity of the people who built them are often sources of contentious debate among experts. These controversies are now being put to rest, thanks to a revolutionary new radiocarbon dating method that accurately pinpoints the age of structures based on organic matter and mortar samples. A recent project carried out by an interdisciplinary team of researchers from the Israel Antiquities Authority and the Weizmann Institute focused specifically on Wilson's Arch, the first in a series of stone arches that supported a pathway leading to the Second Temple. Today, the arch sits beneath the Old City, but when it was built, it stood tall over the streets of Jerusalem. It was once 75 feet high, but is now just 20 feet above the floor beneath it, which was built from debris from the Roman destruction of the city. Previous estimates of the structure's age put the arch's construction as far back as the Early Roman period, before 70 AD, the Mid-Roman period, which encompassed the 1st and 2nd centuries, and the Early Islamic period, which began 600 years later. The new study found that Wilson's Arch was built in two phases. During the first phase, sometime between 37 BC and 4 BC, the bridge was built to a width of 25 feet. Its width was doubled a few decades later during the second phase of construction, in the 1st century AD. Along with the discovery, like many others, comes more questions. Scientists are currently at a loss to explain why the structure was expanded, according to IAA archaeologist Dr. Joe Uziel, who spoke with the Times of Israel. Uziel further explained that the new dating technique that was used on Wilson's Arch, which yields extremely accurate results based on a new science called microarchaeology, will come in handy for learning more about classical monuments in other parts of the world, such as the Parthenon in Greece. Number 1. America's Lost Colony One of the biggest mysteries in the United States is what happened to the Roanoke Colony. In 1587, a group of 117 British settlers led by Governor John White attempted to establish a permanent colony on Roanoke Island off North Carolina. Life was harsh in the New World, so he and a small crew headed back to England to get supplies, leaving their families behind. At first, it was supposed to be a quick trip. Cross the Atlantic, get supplies and funds, and go back. But war broke out between England and Spain, and it took them three years to get back. Three years is a very long time to leave a small group of people stranded in the woods. When John White arrived to Roanoke in 1590, everyone had vanished. The colony was abandoned, and there was no sign of his wife, daughter, and baby granddaughter. The deserted settlement had no human remains, no signs of violence, and the only clue was the word Croatoan carved into a tree. Theories spread as to what could have happened. Perhaps they were kidnapped, killed by Native Americans, or maybe they tried to go back to England on their own. Dozens of artifacts started to appear, with possible clues as to what happened to the colony, but differentiating between what's fake and what's real became a time-consuming task. The biggest clue seems to be the word Croatoan, an island south of Roanoke home to a tribe with the same name. More credible evidence eventually came to light, leading to the likely explanation that the ill-fated Roanoke settlers divided into at least two groups and joined friendly Native American communities nearby. Numerous artifacts discovered in recent years, including English pottery, slate, 
pencils, a light sword, and more all point toward this theory, including a stone containing seemingly authentic inscriptions. They were never lost. It was made up. The mystery is over, says author Scott Dawson, who helped dig up artifacts where the colonists lived with their new communities. If you ask Dawson and many other experts, evidence has long suggested that the settlers at Roanoke joined the tribe when their survival became threatened. Evidence shows that the colony left Roanoke Island with Croatoans and settled on Hatteras Island. There, they had mixed families and lived for generations. As Dawson says, more than a century later, explorer John Lawson found natives with blue eyes who recounted they had ancestors who could speak out of a book, as if they spoke from the past. John White himself wrote of a rival tribe that killed the English and the Croatoans, so the Croatoans befriended the English as a strategic alliance. Dawson says, you are robbing an entire nation of people of their history by pretending Croatoan is a mystery on a tree, he said. These were a people that mattered a lot, and they saved the colony from likely doom by helping them. Thanks for watching! Let me know if you'd like to hear about more mysteries that have finally been solved. Be sure to subscribe if you are new here, and I'll see you next time. Bye!